Now within every educational system, and indeed every school, there'll be various requirements that you have to meet around assessment. Yes, within your class, you'll be able to do formative assessment as you wish. You do questioning, set little quizzes, t uh, little mini tests and so forth. But when it comes to formative assessment, summative assessment, there will be certain expectations around how that is conducted and the mechanisms that you utilize. So one aspect of that is around academic integrity. There'll be certain rules that students need to follow around academic integrity to stop cheating and the rest. But there'll also be certain expectations around teachers in terms of academic integrity. Um, particularly if you're doing comparable assessment across multiple uh, classes and multiple teachers where you don't want to have situations where one teacher is unfairly favoring um, student performance by sharing information about a test with them or giving them um, extensive assess, um, assistance in projects, doing drafts, whereas other teachers teaching the same um, content, the same course, are not doing that. So there are various mechanisms we want to ensure around academic integrity. And it can unfortunately extend even to teachers cheating, where some teachers have been found to be assisting students, um, even in formal test situations, giving them the answers or assisting them in various mechanisms, or indeed uh, favoring certain students in the marking processes. So this is why um, some of our assessment is done externally, where we have um, assessment um, particularly in year 11 and 12, where the assessment tasks are provided from an outside body. So it takes teachers out of that um, process and um, invigilators are brought in to actually monitor what occurs in the assessment environment rather than teachers monitoring that um, to stop any potential cheating from the teaching staff. Now, very rare that that happens, but there's always the possibility and taking away that possibility is the safest uh, approach. There's also quality assurance, where we want to try to maximize the quality of assessment items. Now, as a beginning teacher, your assessment items are going to be relatively poor compared to the more experienced teachers. So um, seeking examples from your more experienced teachers where they've created assessment items or tasks um, seeking advice in setting your own tasks, you'll generally have a head of department whose role is to provide that advice and to provide that support. So when you're, particularly when you're setting summative assessment, because that starts when it, when it gets um, potentially public and high stakes, not just for your students, but for you and for the school, where if mistakes are made, then it can become embarrassing not just for yourself not just for your students but for the school and most importantly for your principal <laughs> or if you're in a state system for the minister of education so you do need to make sure that you follow the school's policies and requirements and you work towards getting assistance when you need to so the two main policy frameworks are around integrity and quality assurance. Um, and every school will have various documents that will be framed, or at least processes and expectations around those. Now, in the course notes, I've shared with you the assessment techniques and conditions from the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority, which set some guidelines around the types of assessment tasks that you can use um, and the various ways of conducting those assessment so that it's done in an authentic, in, in a way that minimizes problems. Now, it's not to say you can't use other techniques, uh, particularly for formative tasks, but in the main, it's safer to stick with those technique advice for summative tasks, or at least seek advice from your head of department if you're going to do a summative tasks that is not part of the techniques and conditions that are accepted 
uh, for the subject, for digital technologies in this instance. So make sure you're familiar with those documents and have a read of them and think about the sorts of tasks that you could utilize in those with your students. Now, then there's a process of what we call moderation. This is where we share what we do with others. So we might share our assessment tasks with our head of department and indeed beginning teachers will um, have that as an expectation. But if you're working in a department with multiple teachers teaching digital technologies, sharing the assessment tasks uh, between the teachers and working collectively to a set assessment tasks is a very effective process. But then also moderating the assessment process itself. So um, getting an A student and a, a B student and a C student and sharing that with another teacher and then you marking their A, B and C student and seeing whether or not you came to similar marking agreements. That's a common moderation process. Um, and there's a whole range of different aspects of moderation around assessment items, um, assessment instruments and um, student assessment. So again, there's some documents there for you to look at and some protocols and techniques for conducting moderation. It's a relatively simple process but again, because this can be high stakes, if you can show and document that you've gone through a moderation process, then if you have a parent or a student complain, or if there's some other issue arises, and you've got that documentary trail that the moderation process has been conducted and showed agreement around um, the assessment processes, then that saves a huge amount of um, problems. It's very rare for anyone to argue against an effective moderation process.